Hi YouTube, and welcome back to my lab. In today's episode, I will be making hydroxylamine hydrochloride from the reaction of nitromethane with hydrochloric acid. In this procedure, I am using 51 milliliters of nitromethane, which is just shy of one mole, followed by 144 milliliters of 25.5% hydrochloric acid. My idea here was to use the highest concentration of hydrochloric acid while ensuring that the boiling point of the mixture remained near 100 degrees Celsius. I measured out the nitromethane first using a graduated cylinder. Both the nitromethane and hydrochloric acid were then transferred into a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. As you can see, the two compounds are not completely miscible. Once combined, I then proceed to set up the mixture for reflux. So what's going on inside the reaction vessel? To begin, nitromethane is in equilibrium between two tautomers, the nitroform and the acunitroform. In the first step, the acuform reacts under acidic conditions to form a hydroxamic acid. The hydroxamic acid is then hydrolyzed into a carboxylic acid, formic acid in this case, and hydroxylamine. Under the acidic conditions, the basic hydroxylamine reacts to form hydroxylamine hydrochloride. This reaction works with most acids, including that of sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, as seen in the video, and oxalic acid. Nitric acid will not work, however, and the reaction is said to involve copious amounts of gaseous products consisting of carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides. Another danger to note is that if concentrated sulfuric acid is used in this reaction, there may be highly toxic carbon monoxide evolved during the reaction. Concentrated sulfuric acid is dehydrating, and will react with formic acid to dehydrate it into carbon monoxide. The analogous reaction with hydrochloric acid should not produce any carbon monoxide. Nevertheless, be safe and perform this reaction under a fume hood. This reaction takes a really long time. At the end of 32 hours, it looked like everything reacted, but once cooled back near to room temperature, the solution became cloudy once more due to the decreased solubility of nitromethane. Therefore, I decided to reflux the mixture for a grand total of 39 hours. I've noted in some previous runs that the reaction mixture would turn yellow, which may indicate some other side reactions occurring, but this is not a big issue. In this case, I distilled all of my reagents and didn't observe any yellowing of the reaction mixture. At the end of 39 hours, I then switched to a distillation setup to concentrate the solution. Hydroxylamine hydrochloride is extremely soluble in water and no crystals were apparent in the mixture just yet. In the collection flask, I collected about 125 milliliters of distillate. Unfortunately, I noted some unreacted nitromethane carried over. I collected approximately 12 milliliters of nitromethane, which means that the reaction did not go to completion. I likely stopped too early and should have used additional acid to keep the concentration high, perhaps a 20% excess. Oh well, something to take note for those repeating the experiment. The reaction vessel was then cooled in the freezer and solid plates of hydroxylamine hydrochloride formed. These crystals were then vacuum suctioned. To not add any additional water, I rinsed up the reaction vessel with the filtrate. The crystals were then dried on the hot plate on low heat and weighed. The first crop of crystals came out to 16.63 grams, but fortunately, there is still more product to recover from the filtrate. 
The filtrate was placed in a small beaker and slowly led to evaporate from about 57 milliliters down to 20 milliliters, leaving a slushy cake upon cooling. According to Orgson, hydroxylamine hydrochloride can be purified by recrystallization from half its weight of water. However, I opted to use for a mixture of ethanol and water to avoid using such concentrated solutions. To my beaker, I added 60 milliliters of 95% ethanol while stirring and brought the mixture up to a low boil. Slowly, I added just enough water while the solution was boiling to dissolve all of the hydroxylamine hydrochloride. This took about 8 milliliters and then I left it to cool. From the tie lapse, you can see beautiful needle-like crystals of hydroxylamine hydrochloride forming. I can also confirm this recrystallization procedure works well to clean up dirty yellow hydroxylamine, which I obtained in previous runs. As before, these crystals were then filtered and allowed to dry on the hot plate. The second crop of crystals yielded 13.11 grams of extra pure hydroxylamine hydrochloride. The total hydroxylamine hydrochloride obtained from the procedure amounted to 29.74 grams, corresponding to a 45% yield, but a 59% yield based on the nitromethane consumed in the reaction. The recovered nitromethane can definitely be reused in another run if required. In an upcoming video, I'll be using this hydroxylamine to make vanillin oxine to test the hydroxylamine I made here, as well as to ultimately make a capsaicin analogue in the near future. Hope to see you soon.